Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to punch, chop, and kick your way through the greatest era of action movies. This week, a departure from our normal show. We're four episodes in to our season all about dynamic duos, or unlikely duos, however you want to look at them. I prefer, even though they're unlikely, they're still dynamic. <laughs> so we've, we're four episodes in. This week, we're going to take a little break. We're going to talk about a John Explains movie. And these are some of my favorite because we always go way <laughs> off the beaten path on these things. So I'm very excited to hear about what John's choice is for John Explains. This is also, these types of episodes are our opportunity to talk about things that are, exist just outside of our themes or our season or our era. That way we can still talk about the other movies that we love, just they don't fit into our regular season format. So before we get started, I do want to mention that we have that newsletter. And the newsletter, is, it's been great, okay? And if you haven't been reading it, you are severely missing out on some serious gems that are inside of the newsletter that coincide with the movies that we've been talking about so far this season. If you missed the Tiger Claws newsletter, there was a great video in there of Jalal and the real Bill Pickles doing an interview together. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Pickles. Mr. Pickles. Put Mr. respect Pickles. on his name. <laughs> if you read the Action Jackson newsletter, there was all kinds of recommendations in there including another great podcast interview with Craig T. Nelson, where he talks about his life of sobriety, and an unreal trailer for a Hindi movie with the same name, Action Jackson. <laughs> Gotta go check out that nice. newsletter. So, without further ado, I'm itching to hear what John has chosen that he is going to explain to Melissa and I, because I'm sure it's something we have absolutely never heard of. But afterwards, I'm going to want to watch it. So what is it, John? So this John Explains is about the 1998 classic, cult classic, Soldier, starring Kurt Russell. It also features Jason Scott Lee, who played Bruce Lee in the movie Dragon. Jason Isaacs, who was in the recent Star Trek Discovery show. He was uh, one of the captains. And Connie Nielsen, who plays Hippolyta in the Wonder Woman movies. So, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, and there's some other people like the main guy from the shield he's in this it's got some notable actors in it directed by paul ws anderson so you know it has to be fantastic yes. yeah of course okay so yeah. we've seen a ton of <laughs> yeah. paul ws anderson obviously he's done some of the death race movies but yes. most importantly he's directed event horizon oh yeah yes. That is which is going to come thing. up, which is going to come <laughs> up in a little bit. So because that was about the same time as this movie, it was written by David Wed Webb Peoples. Now, if you go, I kind of know that name. That's because he also wrote Blade Runner. Oh, interesting. Wow. So let me tell you guys a story. Once upon a time in about 1982-83, David Webb Peoples, while they were filming Blade Runner, decided to write a movie that was a side sequel to Blade Runner. This movie was about a soldier who had been raised to be a soldier who was being replaced by replicant soldiers in the same Blade Runner universe. No way. This okay. So you're telling me that this movie fits in the Blade Runner universe. Yes. This is in the Blade Runner universe that has been confirmed by David Webb Peoples. <laughs> and it tracks... Too, because it takes place, most of the movie takes place in 2035, which is right before the new Blade Runner 2017 movie. Well, it explains some of the plot lines in between the two movies. <laughs> so it exists in that universe. People just doesn't don't know it exists because the movie kind of flopped back mm. in 98. But it is this huge cult classic. Now, why did he write it in 82 and it not get made until 98? Well, it sat for 15 years and bounced around because the original movie was supposed to have Sylvester Stallone. Oh. Uh. But he ended up being busy. So then Clint Eastwood was scheduled to direct it. Wait. And time out. <laughs> time yes. Time out. Who in their right mind is like sci-fi? Someone call Clint Eastwood. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He ended up dropping out, and so 15 years later, after it got some rewrites and some other stuff, 
Paul W.S. Anderson gets his hands on it, and we get Kurt Russell, who almost was Keanu Reeves. But we got Kurt Russell. So Paul the- W.S. Anderson is my hero, and it's because he exclusively makes movies that fit directly in our wheelhouse he doesn't make anything bigger or anything smaller mid-budget actions or sci-fi movies maybe one big actor so i've got kurt russell and it hurts me to say that there was a kurt russell movie in the clock like that that hurts me inside <laughs> oh oh it is so the movie opened and made uh had a about a 60 million dollar budget it opened at 14 million dollars <laughs> and they they so this is they paid Kurt Russell twenty million dollars for the movie, <laughs> so they were negative six million dollars after the opening weekend. Ouch! And that mean, was for just you, Kurt. yeah, good for Kurt. Just to pay money. Kurt, yeah, they had to take a loan out just to pay him. <laughs> he deserves it. He got his money. <laughs> That's taking some risk to be like I. We, we can make this movie if we can make it low budget and have a bunch of nobodies in it, and it'll probably make money. Or we could get Kurt Russell and maybe it'll be big, but there's just so, as much of a chance for it to just like fall flat on his face. <laughs> oh my, they thought this movie was going to take off. They thought it was going to be in the Blade Runner universe. It was going to take off and they had planned, if it had done well, a sequel. Mm. <laughs> Guess we're not getting that sequel. <laughs> no, nope, no. Nope. Well, maybe one day, fingers crossed. You never know the way things get remade these days. Now let's go down the rabbit hole a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about the actual movie and why it kind of flopped. I'm going to read you guys some stuff from Soldier's Trivia on IMBD. It is a side sequel to Blade Runner, and in fact, the vehicles used by the Blade Runner's spinners are also used in Soldier. Hmm. The premise of Soldier was actually based on the an unused opening scene for Blade Runner, where a group of le- replicants are dumped and left for dead on an off-world colony. And both films were released by Warner Brothers, so they're from the same property mm-hmm. as well. The movie itself is basically Kurt Russell. In the very beginning, you see him being raised as a soldier. And then you see him all these different battles and everything. And they actually use Kurt Russell's son, Wyatt, to play his 11-year-old self in the open. He trains as a soldier, and then very early on in the movie, we meet the replicants after... After all the battles and stuff, and these replicant uh, new soldiers are like better in every way, like literally just literally and figuratively kick Kurt Russell's ass. You know, like anything, they decide to go with the new, better, upgraded soldiers, and it's great. They literally throw Kurt Russell away. Like, literally put him on a transport in a garbage transport and dump him on a garbage planet, which is apparently lockout Australia in the universe. Because it's like, people live there! And they just dump their garbage on the planet and fly away. It's like somewhere between a mix of real Australia and the planet from Thor Ragnarok. Yes! Yes, <laughs> very accurate. And then, of course, what happens is he ends up meeting these people and building a relationship with them. And so, of course, when the soldiers, the new soldiers, come to clear the civilians out of the planet, uh, he helps them fight off the new soldiers and save everyone and prove he's better than the replicants. That is essentially the, the plot. That We're is gonna interesting that. that it's from the replicant perspective, like the old version of the replicant perspective. It's kind of like Logan. I know. There's, there's I know. old Logan, and then they got new the X X version of Logan. It's kind of like that episode of Futurama where <laughs> where, where, Bender, where Bender doesn't want to be upgraded, and they put him off on that planet. He goes off on that that no the other island with those other castaway yes. robots. <laughs> it sounds suspiciously similar. I mean. It's almost as if Futurama was an entire show dedicated to every good sci-fi movie and did like yes. Futurama versions of those movies. Yes. So I, wonder, I wonder if that episode was anything like this movie. Huh. <laughs> That is not the only fun about this movie. I wanted to get the plot out of the way because there's so much more fun built into this movie. The initial movie, they wanted to give Kurt Russell time to train. So every day for months, he worked out three to four hours a day, got ripped. And so in order to give him time uh, for 18 months, Paul (laughs) W.S. Anderson made 
the Event Horizon. Oh, yeah. He, <laughs> he literally made that movie as he was waiting to make this movie. That explains because he wanted... so much about that movie. <laughs> it, it kind of feels like Kurt Russell really wanted to get into shape. And so the next movie that came by, I was like, listen, I want you to pay for my trainer. I want you to pay for all my equipment. I want you to pay yeah. for my time and give me 18 months to train. It's for the quote unquote movie. It really is for quote unquote Goldie Hawn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> actually, after the movie flopped, Paul W.S. Anderson actually admitted that the film didn't turn out the way he wanted because he originally, him and screenwriter David Webb Peoples, originally wanted to. Uh, so they originally envisioned a, a kind of a classic Western, sort of a Shane set in space. And they wanted to use all these wide open environments in these existing locations. But because because they had to wait so long for Kurt Russell to get into shape, El Nino hit, and they ended up having to film most of the movie in a studio. <laughs> Kurt strikes again. Okay, but I don't understand. So he was not in shape enough to play that role, but he was okay. It was an okay enough shape to play Event Horizon. <laughs> <laughs> no, not because Kurt Russell's not. In oh, Event okay. Horizon. I was like, wait a minute. No, that's, uh, oh, Sam yeah, Neal. that's right. No, okay, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, wait yeah. a second. No. <laughs> I'm yeah, very yeah. confused. <laughs> no, no, and it gets better. So in the first week of filming, Kurt Russell broke his ankle. Oh. <laughs> and some people, there was a story out that there were some people that said, oh, he broke his ankle doing a stunt. No, he tripped off set on like a cabbage. What? what? <laughs> you can't just casually drop it. He, tri he tripped on a cabbage. <laughs> he literally tripped on an ornamental cabbage <laughs> off set and broke his ankle. So, so they gave him a week off after he broke his ankle. And then the first week of shooting, they only shot the laying down scenes. And then the next week, they only shot the sitting scenes. And then they only <laughs> shot the standing scenes to give him time to recover. Wow. Wow. They All... really bent over backwards for Kurt Russell. <laughs> All over an ornamental cabbage. Like, and they what, paid what him... good is it to have that? <laughs> and they paid him $20 million, And they didn't even make it on open weekend. <laughs> He totally ruined this movie. <laughs> <laughs> to save face, and because he's his, he's uh, like like Dominic said, he's our hero, and and a geek like us, Paul W. S. Anderson, he put in all kind of different sci-fi references built in throughout the movie. The weapons listed that he's trained in are the Illudium. PU-36 ESM, which is the same weapon that Marvin the Martian always threatens to use on Earth in <laughs> the Bugs Bunny cartoons. His service record at one point displays on a computer screen, and it says that he was in the following battles. The battles of Tannhauser Gate and Shoulder of Orion, which are referenced in Blade Runner. He received the Poliskin patch, referencing yeah. uh, Escape from New York and L.A. He's also the recipient of the O'Neill Ring Award, which is referenced to Stargate. Mm -hmm. He also received the Cash Medal of Honor, Tango and Cash, <laughs> and the Mac Ready Cross from The Thing, yeah. as well as the recipient of the Captain Ron Trophy. <laughs> He also was the recipient of the McCaffrey Fire Award from Backdraft. So, like, every single one of his characters. Every Kurt M Russell movie. All in it goes on and on and on. We paid you $20 million. We're taking something from every one of your movies, yes, goddammit. <laughs> and he also received citations for the Nimbian Moves ca Moons campaign, the Antares Maelstrom War, and the War of Perdithian's Flame, all locations referenced in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. <laughs> Khan! <laughs> I want to come back to that they were thinking that it's going to be a Western-like shame. And for those of you that have seen the movie, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about, which is when anyone talks about the movie Shane, the only thing I picture in my head is that scene in which they removed the stump. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so I always, whenever there's some of the movies, like, well, we were thinking it'd be more like a Shane. I'm like, so where's the stump scene? Where's the stump scene in your movie? Hey, soldier, where's the stump scene in your movie? You know, you know what's funny is that there's a scene where he's trying to help them plow a field, and I think that's their stump scene. 
if you're going to use Shane as a reference, you got to have two things. You got to have a stump scene where they work together to remove a stump, which is seriously like 70% of that movie. They work on that stump for a long time. <laughs> two, you got to have the ugliest children <laughs> in the history of film. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, but it ain't like Shane's a looker either. The movie is full of ugly people. All right, so let's get back to getting nerdy. More hidden references in the movie. You couldn't think there was more, right? But there is. So among the garbage on the planet is the USS Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the F-117X Gramora from Executive Decision, <laughs> a spinner from Blade Runner, and a piece of the Lois and Clark from the Event Horizon, which exists, <laughs> proves that the Event Horizon exists in the Blade Runner universe, by the way. <laughs> a true story! Because the soldiers true will be story. in yep. the Blade Runner universe, and, and, it's and Event Horizon planet. exists inside a soldier, that means, therefore, Event Horizon is part of Blade Runner. Yep, yep. Who would have thought we I could told make you the guys. Blade Runner universe better? Exactly. What? <laughs> Beyond that, some of the other weapons training uh, that it records for Todd is the USMC smart gun and the M41A pulse rifle, which are references to Alien, and the Doom NKIV BFG, big effing gun, which is a reference to Doom, the computer yeah. game. Yeah. So, uh, so it is just stuffed to the brim of different sci-fi references to make up for the fact that Kurt Russell ruined their movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's not his fault. He hit a cabbage. It can happen to anybody. Who the hell puts ornamental I know, cabbage I'm in their still, movie? Like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> was it like part well, of the set, or was it like just in the office, or what? It said it was offset, so it had to be like he was walking in the parking lot. And he like walked across the median and tripped. <laughs> oh yeah, because ornamental cabbage can be multiple things. It could be like a plastic cabbage, or it could be like a plant. That it's, I think actually that's what it's cabbage. Mean. It's got to be exactly. Like Who, who's like? I would love to you put some fake plastic cabbage in my better, office. It's a plastic cabbage. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. <laughs> The reason why I keep blaming Kurt Russell for ruining this movie and our chance to have an expanded Blade Runner universe is because in the commentary for Big Trouble in Little China, Kurt Russell stated that he only took another action film at that age because he wanted the paycheck and only <laughs> stuck with it after breaking his ankle and a foot because he still wanted that paycheck. You so need money. <laughs> yeah. You should have to give back some of that money. <laughs> he wanted to get ripped. And that's what he got. He got ripped yeah. and he got money. <laughs> And then he got an ornamental cabbage. I mean, it wasn't better. We're just going to end this with just a few fun, interesting stuff about the movie. In one part of the movie, they want to make the trucks look taller in the military. They want, they want the large military vehicle to look massive. So they hired a bunch of short people, four feet and taller, <laughs> for those scenes as extras. Yes, and so it's literally a bunch of four feet and shorter people with these vehicles to make them look bigger from afar. Where did they find them? <laughs> just went out a like hey you killed. shorty come on <laughs> are you under five nine have we got a job for you i feel so bad for the little people in hollywood because this is literally all you get for roles we need to make a bunch of trucks look bigger come on guys yeah and now that you know peter dinklage being in the um in the MCU and in a stupid HBO show, what is Game that? Of Thrones. Ga Game of Thrones. You heard me out there, people. I said it's a stupid show. I'm never going to watch it. Don't <laughs> at me. I'm ignore that. <laughs> Sean's like, I'm just going to pretend that didn't happen. He's like the go-to. Like, okay, we want to add some diversification. Like, okay, we'll call Peter Dinklage. It's like, okay, but yeah, there's I other know. people that have been, little people that have been acting for a long time. Exactly. So getting back to Soldier, one of the other funny things about this movie is that Todd, the main character that Kurt Russell plays, he's on screen for 85% of the time, but he only says 104 words total. <laughs> so he's like so. Snake Bliskin. Yeah, he never said doesn't say shit. Like, yeah, well, or Rambo. <laughs> Rambo. I was going to say Rambo because it's the same thing. Rambo says yeah, like Rambo two sentences anything. in the whole movie. Um, that requires Sly to read. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, the man could read. He wrote scripts and <laughs> he directed. One of the last things I'm going to leave you guys with about the movie that kind of sums up just a, what a colossal failure it was at the time 
for Warner Brothers. The trailer of the movie featured a spectacular space battle involving 20 to 30 ships around a planet. The film contained no such scene, nor could it plausibly have done so, because the plot, it wouldn't have made any sense in any way, in any form or fashion, based on the plot. So they assholes. They literally tried to get people there by lying to them, by manufacturing a fake scene just to get them in to go see it because Kurt Russell just wanted a paycheck. Those assholes. How could they do that? Like, for sci-fi nerds, you go into it thinking there's going to be this big space battle and then there's not. And it has nothing to do with it because the movie is all because of marketing. That hurts. And I'm in marketing. That's my job. Uh What an asshole. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So there's also references. So there's a bunch of other references. There's references to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Buckaroo Banzai, uh, where they mention Planet 10, uh, and different Star Wars and Star Trek references all throughout the movie. Also, just to put in there that maybe there's some of the people on the Event Horizon who are replicants. Ooh, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm saying they're so, in the universe. Uh-huh. So, and that's pretty much all you have. The only real soundtrack of the movie, there's a couple cuts, like there's a cut of Immigrant Song, um, and there's also like a, a riff from More Human Than Human, but really, realistically, the only real song worth mentioning in the entire movie is a monster, uh, monster mag... Mm. Mm-hmm. But that's pretty much the only music. So, so here's what I heard for the movie Soldier. It exists in the universe, uh, in the Blade Runner universe, which means that it's got some quality sci-fi connections. Obviously, they make lots of references. It's Paul W. S. Anderson, Kurt Russell, and I'm like, yes, I hear all this stuff. You know what it's leaving me with? We should watch Event Horizon. No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> See, if they had made this a few years earlier with Keanu Reeves, it would have been perfect for our podcast. Instead, I have to do it as the John explains. That's true. That's true. Like that's why we love doing these things because it's just slightly outside of oh, our range. Damn. Just a hair. <laughs> just a hair. Golly. Three years earlier, it? and I could have, and I could have made you guys have to suffer through it as well. <laughs> hey, listen. No matter what, probably going to be better than Enemy Mine. So <laughs> I'm sorry, but 100% hey. Enemy Mine is way better than Event Horizon. <laughs> and I said it, so there you go. I would rather watch those two aliens have sex, that alien and Dennis Quaid have sex, than watch Event Horizon. And that alien was a fish man. <laughs> I would rather watch the fish man's penis come out than watch Event Horizon again. <laughs> <laughs> Are you telling me that you don't want to see the event the the you don't want to see the version of Event Horizon that includes the extra half hour that got cut away? No. <laughs> uh-uh. None of it. I I want to I want the actual footage of Kurt Russell tripping over that cabbage before <laughs> I want to watch Event Horizon. No, we're not watching that again. I've watched it too many times. <laughs> I apologize for nothing. <laughs> This sounds like a quality pick. I'm going to have to look through to see if I got it because I'm going to be traveling soon and see if I can put it on my I, I tried to get you. This, this is going to be funny now because I tried to get you to watch this and you're like, yeah, I'm not really that interested in that. <laughs> I was like, look, there, there's, a, there's a movie called Soldier. It's with Kurt Russell. It was one of the movies I pitched one Saturday night and you're like, yeah, I'm good. I don't know. Sometimes, it doesn't sound that good. But, but there's sometimes though that we get to like sci-fi on a Saturday night and I'm like, yeah, I'm not really in the mood. It has nothing to do with like. Oh, I didn't know. 100% just... I didn't read that it was sci-fi. I would not have pitched it. Oh. So <laughs> it's probably good on my part. We didn't watch it. <laughs> I just saw Kurt Russell. I don't know. Like, Kurt Russell. I, I'm saying, I'm saying, you probably should watch it. Or if you like, if uh, you like sci-fi movies like me, you definitely should watch it. But it's not a bad movie. It's a good movie. I like, I like it. I mean, it would have been better with you know the twenty to thirty gun battleship scene. But <laughs> what are you gonna do? Kurt Russell had to work out. <laughs> But I apparently, bet... apparently he skipped leg day. Okay, well now I want to see what he looked like. No, <laughs> so maybe we do need so... to watch this movie. I need to see so... what that eighteen months of working out did to Kurt Russell because he was already in pretty good shape. So I mean, well, so... how much more ripped oh. did he need to get? <laughs> you know what's hilarious too is that earlier in the movie, the guy that plays his rival soldier, Jason Scott Lee, is so much more buff than he is, like ridiculously. <laughs> and I'm sure he didn't take him eighteen months. <laughs> Ouch, I'm sorry, Kurt. <laughs> and that's going to do it for us on Go With The Heat. We hope you enjoyed this out-of-the-ordinary episode for us. 
we've been going long on our episodes too. You've been getting like an hour and twenty minute long episode, <laughs> so forgive us if this one's on the short side. This movie is worth it though, in order to discuss it. I'm ha- always happy when I hear that John explains because it's always going to be something sci-fi and it's or fantasy, and it's going to be something that was never on yep. my radar. And fantasy one that I did the previous season. They're making more, so. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a threat. (laughs) (laughs) So we would love to hear from you all. Be sure to go to that website, goattheheat.com. You can find all the ways to contact us. Like I said, we're about halfway through the season. We have four more movies to go. Me and Melissa have something special planned too. The encounter of the John Explains is going to be like a Dominic and Melissa Explains. Although I think the movie that we've chosen, John has seen. So it's going to be a fun discussion. As after we get past canine and discuss <laughs> maybe something that's a little bit more respectable out of Jim Belushi. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a tall ask. <laughs> Which so, I love Jim Belushi. If you haven't heard, go out and buy his pot. <laughs> we are also in mid-summer. So that means that things are busy. John, who is... A contractor, this is bit busy season. We have the kids getting ready to go back to school. So with that in mind, keep in mind out there, people, that we might take a week off here or there. So you might see an episode or two that might get a little delayed this summer. It's just because, you know, we're busy. we got shit going on. No one's paying us to do this podcast. (laughs) Now, if you want this podcast to come out on time every two weeks, (laughs) you get out that checkbook, see? (laughs) Otherwise, otherwise we might start mixing in reruns every other week. (laughs) Otherwise, this is just a passion project and we do it for fun. So forgive us if over the summer we take a week off here and there while we're going through the summer. If you haven't heard, we lived in Arizona. We moved back to Seattle area, and apparently the weather moved with us. And we ain't got no air conditioning up in this bitch, and so it gets fucking hot. So if we're supposed to record on one of those weekends, it's supposed to get hot, you ain't getting an episode. Sorry. <laughs> We'd love to hear from you. Go to that website, goattheheat.com. You can find all the ways to contact us. Email us, goattheheat at gmail.com. Reminder, you can get the show on basically every podcast or platform of choice out there, including Spotify. You can watch the videos on YouTube. I'm a little behind on the captions because I've taken over doing them myself rather than hiring the person through Fiverr who wasn't wasn't delivering on my expectations. So we're getting better at that. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Be sure to subscribe to the show. Share it with someone that you might know that helps us uh, get in more people's ear holes. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this episode, this off the beaten path episode. Our John explains of the movie Soldier. That's all for this week. Bye, pal.